This is the food that's being served to you in the spirit. And that people in the world are eating. And when they eat it, it actually affects them. Actually affects what the, how they see things. And you wonder, how could people go from this to this? Right is wrong, wrong is right. It's what they're partaking of. When many of us were growing up, they told us how to, the, the school diet, they told us what to eat. There's four categories of food. You have to eat one from each category. And how much? Years later, they said, you know what? We were all wrong. They came up with a food pyramid. And they said, you know, a lot of all these things to eat. And then they, years later, they said, you know what? That was wrong. It says best to eat a lot of carbohydrates. And then they said, that's wrong. They came up with all sorts of diets, and then years later they found out that people who ate them actually gained weight. You know, there's all this, this low diet food, there's all this diet food, and if you eat a lot, those who ate a lot of it actually gained weight. And then they came up with the Atkins diet, eat mostly protein. Then others said that, now, well, that's not quite healthy. Then they came up with the South Beach diet. I don't even know what that is, something to do with eating food on a beach. I don't know. The vegan diet, the vegan, the vegan diet, the paleo diet, the zone diet, the keto diet. You had a diet where you basically ate cabbage, cabbages and what well, cabbage juice, you know. And if you have, you have a diet like that where you just eat cabbage or cabbage juice, you end up saying, this is so horrible, I'm not going to eat anything, and you lose weight. So it works. You know, that's how you do it. <laughs> One diet they said is always healthy is the Mediterranean diet. Everyone agrees the Mediterranean diet is the way to go. Whatever you do, whoever you are, eat the Mediterranean diet until this week. An article came out said the Mediterranean diet is actually unhealthy. Not the food, but the fact that the foods are filled with pesticides and chemicals. So if you, if you just have the foods they say, which are healthy and healthy, but they have, you, if only if you can eat it without pesticides or else it'll, it'll kill you. So people are always on diets. Never in history have there been so many people on diets. The problem through much of history is we didn't have enough food. Now we have too much food. Our problem is we are always dieting. And if you notice, most people who are always dieting don't get thinner. They get bigger, or they get thin for a little bit, then they get bigger again, and they're back. Now, the Bible begins with a diet. The diet is basically, don't eat from that tree diet. That's all they had to do. Follow this. Don't eat from the tree, and they would have been healthy. They would have been great-looking, young all the time. But, of course, they ate from the tree. Now we are not healthy or young-looking. And, and so we have every other diet because we didn't follow God's diet. Now tonight I'm going to talk about a new diet, except it's not, it's ancient. And I'm calling it the temple diet. Now whether you're on a diet or have never been, there's, there is some truth to take from this, from people who are always dieting or, or concerned about it. Number one, what you eat matters. Number two, what you eat can make you sick or healthy. Number three, what you eat will affect your physical being, what you look like, and even how much energy you have, what you do or don't do, even how long you live in many cases. Food is what you live on. It allows you, food allows you to move and breathe. You've got energy today. You have thoughts today. You are, it is being fueled by food. Food gives you life energy and with your even your being is from food what you eat you become your hands your your blood everything is from food your brain food is critical crucial diet is crucial at uh, first we just saw the entire fall of man linked to food god appears to abraham sarah quickly goes to prepare food abraham encounters melchizedek with bread and wine Jacob and Esau, the birthright is sold for food and then given through food. Joseph is lifted up in Egypt because of a dream and a prophecy that's linked to food. Joseph in Egypt prepares a, a banquet for his brothers. Passover, the central celebration of the Bible, is a meal. And it will become central, of course, in our salvation when Messiah fulfills it. But it goes beyond Passover even into late, the later holidays like the later ones like Purim and Hanukkah. It's been said if you want to sum up the Jewish holidays, it's basically this. They tried to kill us. We won. Now let's eat. That's, that's some of them. The great central blessing of Israel is called the Motzi. Jesus said it at the Last Supper. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam ha-motzi lechem min ha-aretz. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread or food from the earth. And then comes Mount Sinai, the law. Kosher, non-kosher. 
It even has to do with your salvation. It was a vision of food, of unkosher food, that led the gospel to go forth to the world, to the nations, with Peter. But why was it that food was so important to God in the first place? Now there may have been reasons of health. There may be things that he says don't eat that may be not great for you. But everything with Israel, the physical has a spiritual dimension. God separates a people for himself from all nations, and then he tells them, you have to keep this diet. You must eat kosher. What is clean and partaken of the nation, what's clean to the nations is not clean to you. You are a separate people with a separate diet. A peculiar people, a peculiar diet. The word kosher has been come into our language, into English, to mean speak of anything that is okay or good, or acceptable, or right. Hey, it's kosher. That's kosher, or that's not kosher. God called for a kosher diet because God called a kosher people. Why? Because what you eat, what you partake of, is crucial. In the physical realm, it becomes you physically. It allows you to physically move, have energy. But so then we want to take it into the spiritual. I'm not talking about what you can eat down here. I'm talking today about the spiritual realm. So therefore, this relates to it. So what you can partake of in the spiritual realm is crucial because the temple diet is talked about is today is a spiritual one, ultimately. The people of Israel were told to eat kosher food, and that signified they were the people of God. And they would partake of what is of God and not partake of what is not of God. What is your spiritual food? It's that, it's food. It's what you live on spiritually. It's what you take in spiritually. It's what sustains you spiritually, what causes you to grow spiritually or not grow, what brings you healing. Food brings you healing, wholeness, but so it gives you spiritual wholeness or not. It's what you hunger for or what you yearn for, what fills you, what you you fill yourself up with. God says, I will make a new covenant, not like the old one I did when I took you out of Egypt, the the law, but I will put it in you. So it's going to be about inside. Now we're in the new covenant. It's about the inside, spiritual food. You are, if you are born again, you're a child of God and you are, you are of a holy nation. And what, and therefore, whatever applied to Israel in the, in the physical applies to you, at least in the spiritual. So let's identify. It means that what you partake of has to be different from what the world partakes of. So let's identify the food. What food is it? What are you taking into your life spiritually? I mean, it should be the things of God, but there's other things. What are you living on? What's sustaining you? What is your real joy and your delight? What do you hunger for? What do you focus on? What do you want for, from, from this world? What do you want? Or what are you trying to get? What are you trying to fill yourself with? That is their spiritual food, or that, whether it's good or bad. Is it the approval of people? That's food. You're living on it. Is, it. is it the entertainment of the world? That's also food, spiritually. Is it pornography? Or is it a substance abuse? Is it something dark? Is it, a, is it something, is it a material possession? It may not be right or wrong in itself, but it's become an idol. That's food. Spiritually, is it success? Is it comfort? Is it more money? Is it something, is it something that God says this is not food? It's going to impact your spiritual well-being. You'll end up not feeling right spiritually, or all clogged up spiritually, bloated spiritually, sluggish for the things of God. Now, I'm not saying all television is bad. Much of it is. It's getting worse. But if you spend hours and hours and hours a day in front of the television and said, how do you feel at the end of that? Do you feel spiritually revived? Chances are you do not. How do you think you would have felt if you spent some, at least even some of that time in the presence of God? You would feel great. You would feel revived. When you partake of the wrong foods spiritually, you'll find that you're unable to do the things of God or you don't have the the will to do the things of God or the joy and the passion to do it. See, food gives you energy. But if you eat the wrong food, you won't have the energy of God. You won't, you won't, you'll have the wrong energy. You won't have the energy of the thing, the things of God, the food of God brings the energy of God, which brings the ability, the power to do the will of God. 
And also, what else do we know about food? Food becomes you. You Not just it gives you, you energy. It actually, be, you are what you eat in that sense. Well, if you're eating, if you're not eating the things of God, you won't become like God. And if you are not eating the things of God, you, you will not change. And if you're eating something else, you'll become like, you'll become what you eat. Spiritually. Now, I've known people physically who never watched their diet. And that was okay for a while, but they paid a giant price for it. From sickness to loss of function to early death. You have to watch your spiritual diet. A healthy spiritual walk and life requires a healthy spiritual diet. You cannot be partaking in the world's diet, filling yourself up with everything that is of the world, and expect to live a, a dynamic, on-fire life for God. It doesn't work. Now let's take it to the next level. The Jewish people were told to keep a separate diet from that of the world, kosher. But among the children of Israel was another group of people that were further separated to God, and they were called the Kohanim tribe. Kohanim. Kohanim is the way in the Bible that we say the word priest. Priest is actually linked to the word for elder. It's really not the best, but it's that, that's how we say it. We call them the priests. They were the Kohanim, the sons of Aaron, the ministers of Israel. They were separated, so Israel was separated from the nations. Then the priests, Kohanim, were separated from Israel in a sense, so that they could be closer to God, they could minister to God. Now, the priests certainly ate kosher, but they did more than that. The priests had a special diet in this sense. They lived off of the food of God. They lived off of the food of the temple. Theirs was the temple diet. What was the food of the temple? It was the food of the sacrifices that were brought to the altar. They, the priests were to live on the holy offerings of God, on the sacrifices of God. So their food was to be especially pure, especially holy, with especially consecrated to God. So they were even more separated, so their food had to be even more separated. They lived on the sacrifices of God. Now they ministered the sacrifice, and they lived on the sacrifice. So they lived, so, so now in the New Covenant, the Word of God says, we are not only children of Israel. If you are born again, you are, you are a child of Israel in the Spirit. You are a citizen of Israel. But it also says, you are a priest. So you're a child of God, you're an Israelite in the Spirit, and you're a priest, a Kohanim, one of the Kohanim. It means, and you are a royal priesthood. So that means if you are a priest of God, you have to eat the purest of foods, the food of the temple. You know, the stream of the media that flows into your house, flows into your computer, flows to your television, flows to, it, or is, is more ungodly than it has ever been. Talk about the end time culture. It is increasingly, so as a believer, this is the food that's being served to you in the spirit. And that people in the world are eating. And when they eat it, it actually affects them. Actually affects what the, how they see things. And you wonder, how could people go from this to this? Right is wrong, wrong is right. It's what they're partaking of. And what they're feeding children. You have to draw a line in the sand and say, I will not watch this. I will not partake of this. I will not be entertained by this. I'm not saying what it is. You have to know between you and the Lord. Certainly if it's against God, you say, I don't want that. I cannot pollute myself with that. What you eat must be holy. You're a priest. Amen. You don't want to only go for what it is to be chosen, child of Abraham, citizen of Israel. You want to go for minister, priest, uh, agent of God. You're called to be a representative of God. His minister on the earth. That's awesome. You're called to greater things. If you want to fulfill a greater calling, all that God has for you, do great things for God, a great walk with God, a great life in God, you have to aspire to this, that what I receive into my spirit, what I receive in my eyes, what I receive in my heart is going to be holy. A priestly diet. Now remember the key of the food and energy. Food and energy. If you are to do the work of God, you have to do it with the energy of God. 
And if you're going to do something great, if you're going to live a life of great works for God, great ministry for God, you have to partake even more of the food of God. It means you need priestly energy. Priestly energy comes from priestly food. The, the priests of the temple had to eat in order to minister. It was priestly energy, priestly food. God, if you want to do great things for God, you want to live a great life for God, you have to eat the most holy things. You have to choose. I'm going to be even more guarding what goes into my heart, into my mind. Even more, it means even more, I'm going to delight in the things of God more than I did. Seek Him more. You see, what you delight in is going to be your food. The greater your calling, the greater must be your partaking, your food. And some of you have been fasting from the things of God. You're not filling yourself up. You're not filling yourself up with God. And you have, it's like you're going without food and then you're wondering, why don't I have the, the zeal and the passion and the love? Why am I not becoming more like him? Because you're doing the wrong fast. You have not been eating. A secret. Whatever you need to do, you eat that. Let me explain. God calls you to love. You know you have to love. So much of the, what we're called to do is loving. But how can I love? I want, you want love? You don't have love for that? Eat love partake of God's love and you'll have love. You can't give what you don't have. You need to be pure. How do I become pure? I can't just make myself pure, but I can feed on the purity of God. And if I eat that, if I take that in, I will become, the more I dwell on His purity, the more my thoughts are going to become pure. My motives are going to be pure. You want joy? Eat joy. Partake of joy. You'll give joy when you have joy. You want to bless, you know, you're called to be a blessing. You want to bless people, bless, but you got to receive it. You can't give what you don't have. So if you're going to bless whatever you need, you need the energy of blessing of everything you have in your entire calling, everything that God's called you to do for the rest of your life, he knows it. You need, you've got it by him. You got to re receive it and you will do it. Now think of the temple and the food of God's priests. What was it again? What were they partaking of? The sacrifice. What is the sacrifice? The sacrifice was all about one thing, Jesus, Messiah. So what is this saying? What's the spiritual revelation? The priest lived on the sacrifice. What does it mean? It means you need to live on Yeshua, Jesus. That's why when he said, if you would be, you have to partake of me. Eat. He said, eat my flesh. Eat. And they, they all said, what? That's crazy. What are you talking about? But, but it was the whole point is you have to partake of him. You can't just believe him. That's great. You believe in him. That's great. You got to partake of him. And to partake of him. You know, the, the, the call is that we all would become like him. How do you become like him? You partake of him. You can't, you can't reproduce him. You can't match him. You can't come up with another Jesus. To, it's only him. So you got to receive from him. You want to live the life of Yeshua, Messiah, Jesus, you got to have the energy of Jesus. And you get the energy, you got to have the food, you got to have the bread. If you want to be victorious, you want to do great things, you want to grow, but first of all, put away that which is not food. The, the verse says, why do you go after things that are not food, not bread? Come to me. So the first thing is you have to put away what you are feeding on that is not of God. Because when you feed on it, it hurts you doubly. Number one, you're eating something bad. Number two, you're not eating something good. And number three... When you take in the bad, it fills you so you're not hungry for the good. You wonder, you want it, you're called to grow in the Lord, not just stay in the Lord. It doesn't matter how old you are, you're supposed to be growing. So in order to grow, you don't have to, you don't you have, to have to try to grow. You need to partake of the food. If you partake of Him, you will grow into His image. If you partake of His love, you'll grow into His love. Partake of His, of his goodness, you'll grow into His goodness. And what did the priest have in the holy place? Altar of incense on one side or in the front. Menorah, the lampstand, golden thing there. And they had the showbread. They had food in the holy place. Food can be holy. Why, what is this showbread about? You know, when I'm reading this as a new believer, I'm telling you, what is showbread? Is it Broadway bread? What is showbread? Well, it's a, it's a translation of the Hebrew word 
That is, is this, lechem panim, which means the, means the bread of the presence. You know, we tra they translate it showbread, but show, it's the bread of the panim. Panim is the presence of God. It says show because it's, it's presenting, it's, it's, it's manifesting. Bread of the presence. So what they had to do in order to fulfill their calling, they had to partake of the bread of the presence. What does that tell you? The presence of God is your bread. Amen. It's your bread. The bread of life. It's what you really need more than anything. You need the presence of God. Not only do you need to know about God, you need the presence of God. That fills you. And you, if you know what I'm talking about, it's for you who have gotten into the presence of God to the point where you didn't have to struggle anymore. It's just like, wow, this is, this is what I am for. This is what is my joy. This is my ecstasy. This is my purpose, the presence of God. It says we are to have treasure, a treasure in this earth and vessel. He's supposed to be filling you. If you're not, you got to get on this diet. And, and the only way you could get to that bread is to go inside the holy place. So you didn't see the bread on the outside. It was an unseen bread. The world didn't see that bread. You see it on the inside. And, and it is the food of the priests too. Lechem panim, the bread of the presence, is the food of the priests. The presence of God is what fills us. What we live on is our joy. Only the priests could have it. Only the priest. The priest had to dwell in the joy of God, in the presence of God. And live in the worship of God is the bread of the presence. Amen. And the word, say, say the word, panim. panim. Now when you talk about your face you say, in Hebrew, it's my panim. God's panim. When I say the blessing at the end uh, that, he, that God gave, it was all focused on the panim. May the Lord cause his panim to shine on you. May the Lord cause his panim and he lift it up to you. But so panim, interesting, when it talks about the panim of God, it's not, it's not a singular word. It's a plural word. So you could translate it, may the presences of God, may the faces of God. Meaning there's not just one blessing in this. Every day you need the, you need the blessing of the panim. There's another blessing for every day. You need it new every morning. How do they eat the manna? Had to be new every day. They couldn't store it up except on the Sabbath. They had, so you need the presence of God every day. Every day. Paul said that, that I wish, you know, I, I count everything I had in the world as nothing for the surpassing value of just knowing Him. What do you say? What's it say in the Psalms? One thing I have asked of the Lord. One thing I have desired that I might dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will seek after him I'll behold, to behold his beauty. My, what does it say? My heart longs and pants after the living God. He is the bread. He's the bread for every moment of your life. God's presence will give you joy, will give you fullness, will give you healing, will give you energy to do the work of God, will give you power and anointing. We need the face of God. We need the face of God to shun us. We need the presence. It says, it says Paul says, I pray that you be filled up with the fullness of God. How, how can you be filled up with the fullness of God? The greater the calling, the greater the presence you need. The great, you want to do great things for God? I hope you do. You want to become great in God? <clears throat> you want, the good news is you can, but the key is your diet. The key is what you eat. This is the food of the temple. God says, that, 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 that gives joy. This is, God says in Ezekiel about the priests, he says, in the, in the temple yet to come, he says, that they will enter my sanctuary and they will come near to my table. Near to my table. God called you to be his priest. That means you are called to come near to his table and to eat what others cannot eat. To manja, receive, because God has called you for that. Put away the junk food. Here's the, here's the homework. Put away that junk food. Say, no, I cannot even get a cheap thrill out of that anymore because it's poisonous. Put away the junk food. Partake of the holy heavenly food of your calling. For you are called to be the priest of God, and this is the bread of heaven. This is Jonathan Kahn. Thanks for watching. The Josiah Manifesto and all my books you can get anywhere, Amazon, wherever books are sold. Shalom.